Hey folks, man, this is Monk. We are back with another episode of Classics of Cinematics, man. And this is the show where we talk about the classic films that shaped and warped our childhoods. And I'm joined as always, my co-host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, folks, man. So today we got a really special film. Uh, this is going to be a sequel. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the first one was one of our most popular episodes, man. Shout out to the growth and, and the exposure that we got from that, man. I Most don't know definitely. what it is, but that thing blew up. Uh -huh. And that was the first Creep Show film. So today we're going to be talking about Creep Show 2, man. And let me give you the synopsis on this. Um, this is the second horror anthology um, with more eerie tales based on Stephen King's stories. One episode finds a cigar store Native American statue coming to life to avenge the death of the shop owner and his wife. Another features a group of teens menaced by a blob-like creature. Final installment follows a wealthy and callous woman who hits a hitchhiker with a car and decides to flee the scene, but the victim isn't inclined to remain dead. And um, this is directed by Michael Gornick. Um, and it's interesting, uh, this comes out in 1987, $14 million uh, box office off of three and a half million, uh, which is interesting. I mean, this thing does feel cheap. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So so I guess let's get into it, man. Um, or also the cast, man. Let's go through this real quick. So interestingly enough, we got some of the creators who are pop up in this thing, playing characters of Tom Savini's in this thing, um, Stephen King. Um, Dominic John, Jeremy Green, uh, Lois Childs of George Kennedy. Uh, he's great. You know, he's always great when I see him and stuff. Hope McCallany, Paul Satterfield, uh, Paige Hanna, David Holbrook, Daniel Beard, Dorothy Lamore, Frank Salsado, Tom Wright, um, Don Harvey, Dean Smith, and some more people. But let's get into this, man. Uh, what do we like about this? <laughs> uh, first thing, I'm, I like the intro. I feel like it, it, it pays homage to, you know, the creep show stories as a whole, as it gives us, you know, uh, the creep, you know, played by Tom Savini. Um, one thing I will say, I, I didn't really like the way that the, they made the creep look in this one. It looked a little, a little wonky. I, I think the animated say. version. No, nah, um, even when he uh, when they first show him. Oh yeah, in, in the truck. In, in the truck, mm -hmm. um, at live action. But I think that it is cool that they do go into the the comic book style animation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to like kind of just reinstill the fact that this is based off comic books or uh, graphic novels, and you know what I'm saying that that really works for this film. Um, I did like that too, man. Um, that's the thing that stood out to me, that animation. And we yes. actually got a lot more of it in this yes. film. I think kind of in a way. And like, how many um, stories did we get in the first one? Was there like five? five. Yeah, so this one only has three. And I think partly um, the animation definitely um, takes up a little bit of um, what could possibly have been one of the stories in the original. If you combine all those animated parts. Yeah. But, but you're right, like... Um, he did look funny and immediately like like he wasn't this skeletal thing. He was like a human, but like an old face looking. Almost looked like a, a witch or or like the leprechaun. Like yeah. like a, yes. the so, leprechaun. yeah. The character design was off, but <laughs> just to your point, um, this one does only give us three stories, but originally it was supposed to have five. Mm. But due to budget restraints, they yeah. uh they cut uh they cut out the the last two stories, which ironically enough, one of them was uh, a story called the Cat from Hell, which ended up getting uh getting it getting its exposure in uh the film that came out uh the tales from the dark side oh uh, okay yeah so oh, like that's a low budget but three and a half million dollars but i feel like we've had hits made for that amount or even less in that era that were came out pretty uh well made so maybe i don't know maybe they just you know stretch themselves thin um i, I could see some of the especially the um you know the, the one with the blob in the middle um you know costing a lot of money to get all that made with the, the effects and the makeup mm -hmm. and stuff going on but but I, like i said i really do like that man but uh, i guess since we do have these three segments um we could probably just go into what those segments the, the different stories are man because um um I, I do like you know some of the actor choices man especially like george kennedy in this first one which which is the um revenge story you know we got a merchant 
um, who's kind of, you know, runs this little mom and pop uh, store that's, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. And it might be the only place to come and get stuff, mm -hmm. you know, in this area. And he seems to have a really cool um, relationship with the natives in that yeah. community. So they he, he's been cutting them credit and all that, even to the point where, you know, a big guy, like, a, like it seems like a senior in that community comes through the store and he's even still trying to extend him credit and the guy's like no nah, man we're gonna come back and pay you dude like like we're gonna we pay our debts you know yeah. what I'm saying? and um it's a cool interaction let you know that this guy has a good heart but then later on some uh, local goons you know in, in the town decide to rob the store and end up um killing the merchant and his wife in the process man so what's crazy is you got this big statue in the front of the store that comes to life and and that's revenge on him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So so it's a weird story, but it's also probably my least favorite in the entire film, to Ab be honest. Absolutely. Like this watching this story kind of reminds me of a, a show that was out around the same time called Amazing Stories. Mm -hmm. And it this this is how this one's hitting. It's not it doesn't really feel scary in a sense. Um mm -hmm. I, I get the re the revenge aspect, but you know, the approach that they took was just so uh it, it, it was just it, it didn't feel right you know what i mean and it feels like something we've seen before but also just done way better you know? yes yes and then you know like when they actually bring the the cigar chief or the you know the wooden statue to life mm -hmm. the movements just it it's it like he's kind of like moving like the mummy yeah but not as good it just it, it just it didn't really seem to hit like yeah, when, when it came to like the kill scenes and stuff, it's like, dude, how how can you not shake a wooden figure that's moving like he's made out of wood? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's really weird uh, the choice of how it's done because I, I mentioned earlier before we started uh, filming this, the um, you see the statue in front of the store in a couple scenes, and clearly it's the guy in the suit standing yeah. there and not the statue himself, and 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 it'll be like, and it's trying as hard as. To sit still, but I swear, like I was watching, like, yo, that guy's in the suit now. He's moving. Like, why didn't they just use the statue? Right. Zoom in on that. So, so it was really wonky. But maybe, maybe they just had time constraints as well. You know, going along with the budget, you got less money, you got less time to mess around and do stuff. But it does look wonky, and it's just a basic revenge story. Uh, maybe that um, the scene where the robbery takes place was supposed to be the big uh, moment, but even that plays kind of screwy. Um, it's hokey acting. <laughs> it really does. And then, like, when you find out what's motivating, you know, the the people that are doing the robbery. I mean, the head guy, he actually has ties. He's like mm -hmm. the nephew to the the chief or uh, the head, you know, that the the OG that actually gives the store owner the the bag full of you know jewels and what have you to kind of pay off the debt. And then he wants to rob them for that. Mm -hmm. He's flicking his hair and talking about being an actor. He was like, "Yeah, we're gonna rob y'all so we can go to." Hollywood and become, become <laughs> actors and stuff. It's like, dude, y'all ain't even wearing no masks. Like, you think no one's gonna know who you are, dude? I mean, it's an older, uh, bygone era. I mean, I, I don't think there's any cameras here. Then, so by all intents and purposes, they probably would get rid of it, get away with this crime. There's no nothing around this store. There's no townspeople, you know. But, you know, except for the statue comes in, and, and even that goes, like, you can tell the, the budget, that's when it hits, like, when yeah. when they start killing people, and you're just like, wow. Even with Tom Savini, the legend behind the, the gore effects, it just, it doesn't hold up here. Not at all. <laughs> like, th this is one where you watch it, you just have to applaud the effort. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey, man, A for trying. Yeah, that's all we get out of that, man. Yeah. And then, you know, we get a, a little animated narration in between because then there's a subplot of the kid, the comic book and the kid, and he's getting bullied. But I really like the time they gave us yeah. with that. And the weird thing about it, the animation does look screwy. There's a creepiness to it. There's yeah. something's off about it where not that it's showing us anything particularly gory or anything, but it just looks really goofy, the movement. And, like, the the, the, the Crypt Keeper really looks funny in that, though. Yes. Creep. He's like he got um chin nuts. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's, it's, it's wow. <laughs> you know, but you can also tell this has also got to be due to budget restraints because mm -hmm. you know they spend so much time with the animated story in between yeah. as the interludes to the stories that we get. I mean, and it, it, I mean, it plays well. Actually, not for nothing, that's probably what saves this film. All in all, I would also say that that first story with the uh, the statue that. That goes on entirely too long, man. You yes. know, it, it just feels like it's 
like a lot of the setup it, 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 like by the time that was done we're almost at the halfway point in this 90 minute film you yeah. know what i'm saying like <laughs> it's crazy to me um so next up we get the um the story of the lake uh which i this is my favorite one man this is more along the lines of a lot of the things we're getting in this era it almost feels like it's starting off like a friday the 13th yes with a bunch of teenagers they're going to hang out at this lake and camp and drink and and, and sex and smoke weed or whatever and then the um the funny part is um apparently there's some substance or creature i don't know what it is in this calling lake. it an oil slick but it does not look like like an oil spill <laughs> in the lake I mean, initially and that's the thing too where like I, I like how this is my my favorite story in this film as well and they set the tone because it shows right out the gate this this thing is like consuming a duck and mm -hmm. they're just they're so engulfed in whatever they don't see other yeah. you know endeavors they're gonna you know go through on this on this little adventure that they don't even see the duck mm -hmm. you know and they're like yeah continue to you know declothe and like yeah let's swim out to the raft you know mm -hmm. and um you know the the one thing that kind of that i did like about it is it's simple but it's effective mm -hmm. like when you see the blob like moving through the lake it really just looks like a big trash bag it doesn't yeah. it doesn't really look like they put a lot of energy or effort into making the the creature design in that aspect as, as a fisherman it, you know what it reminds it looks like the, the the it looks like a weed bed that, that i was seeing in the lake like like you know like like you're fishing you, you usually there the water's clean but this lake here it's a lot of vegetation so there's just just weeds and stuff sitting on the bottom of the lake just below the water surface in real life that stuff is green it's algae looking mm -hmm. and the green of the weeds but in this movie it's like black but it has the same kind of texture yeah and look to it <laughs> but you know where, where they really like rev this one up is when we actually see the blob consuming the individuals as they go that's mm -hmm. where you can tell they put the money at you know what i'm saying because i mean it looks like it's it like when when it touches the skin it almost like dissolves it in yeah. a way like the way it consumes the and it drags you in too man. yeah you know so i thought that that was really cool um but outside of that i mean it's it's, it's just a, it's a real simple story as it plays through and then you know it gives us that that siege film sense because yeah. i mean they're they're out there stuck on this little like it, what, what what are you a, a pallet you know and yeah. Yeah, they call the, it all the raft or yeah. dinghy. Yeah, I mean, I guess they, they would call they call it a raft in here, but but it's 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 almost like a um, piece of it's not it's like a pier, but it's not attached to the to the edge of the lake. It's yeah. just out there, and there's no boardwalk. Like you got to yeah. swim out to get to it. Yeah, just to jump on it to dive back off it into the water. Yeah, it would be a place you'd swim out to, and and you could sunbathe on it or whatever, and rest out there while you're swimming and stopping. You know, I'm surprised when all four of them were on it, it didn't start to sink. I mean, it didn't it didn't look like yeah. <laughs> it could hold that much. Yeah, it's probably just good enough for that. You know, it's, it's, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't try to have a part. Oh no. no, no. <laughs> But they did, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but see, that that's kind of cool because it's lurking there. You know, they're they're kind of going like beefing with each other. You know, what should we do and all this, and and and, and they're kind of turning on each other. And this thing, this 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 slip thing, is looking like just a piece of carpet that's being dragged through the lake. It's just surrounding them, yo, and then it's just trying to come at them. It's coming through the bottom. Like that, that I think this yeah. story probably has the most effective horror elements, man, and, and just the the fun, you know, the situation. And it spent a little bit of time with character development. Like we we see that you know there's the unsuspecting character, and you know the other guy. I think his name. What was his name? Uh, <laughs> oh gosh, uh, Randy. Mm -hmm. He's the one like that's the underling to you know the the guy that's wearing the football jersey. He's like the the big alpha male and. You know, when things start hitting the fan, he even shows his misogynistic alpha male way, ways when he's like, yeah, man, you know what? I can beat this thing. I'm going to swim to the shore, you know, and that's when we see that the 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 blob can come through the cracks of the thing, yeah. gets his foot and everything. Yeah, it's creepy, man. It's, it's effective, man. It's probably, like you said, this is my favorite part. And, and, you know, one by one, they go down for various reasons. Until it's just two left, and then that's funny, man. It, it's got it's crazy because you know they fall asleep, and then I think the um, um, which is crazy to me. I don't know how you just fall asleep with this thing being able to come through the things like right. they do. 
But they wake up and my man is creeping on over the old woman who's sleep. And that's more creepy like, than the blob. Yeah. Like, like, dude, you wake up, you know, two, two of your folks just died. They got pulled into the river mm -hmm. the night before or the day before. And, you know, you wake up and the first thing you want to do is start trying to cop feels and, and, and do yeah. unnecessary pervy things to the, the only other survivor who mm -hmm. happens to be a woman when you first wake up. It's like, dude, come on, man. And meanwhile, when he turns her over to get a look at her face, you realize the thing has started pulling her through from the mm -hmm. from the bottom. It, it's actually, you know, overnight, it, it's it's gotten to her face. And, and once she gets your face, man, the rest of you is pretty much gone. Like, it's just a matter of time. Dang, I just saw that. Notice that they busted through the um the thing. Oh, it's going to lose the ring. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that was there's some cool stuff going on in this one. I definitely feel like if the rest of them were at least as interesting as this, then this film would have been a way more successful. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But this is also, you know, where the special effects really kick in because, you know, like you said, when, when he rolls the, the young lady over, you know, and then her face is kind of exposed to the cracks in the rack, mm -hmm. when he rolls her back over, like you really see the amount of time that they took into the special effects. It, it mm -hmm. almost looked like uh, anyone who's seen Cabin Fever, the, yeah. the Eli Roth one, when the chick starts to just deteriorate from the face, that's that's what we get. And that was cool, mm -hmm. you know. But all in all, you know, my man, then, he, you know, he, he almost like he, he used her as a sacrificial lamb. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame him. Like, I mean, at but, that you point, know, she's done. Like, like I mean, <laughs> but she was done due to his pervin. And yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's kind of messed but, see, up. I don't know. I feel like she was already... Um, Cause you know, even though he was doing what he was doing, but but we saw that it had already started, you know, on her face and and you know grabbing her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, but yeah, you are right though, right here, because there's a chance she, she's just mildly been touched by it. So I mean, and they're at the point where he he <laughs> he tells her he's like, "Yo, stand on the boards. Don't mm -hmm. stand on the cracks. They can come through the cracks." But, yeah. You know, you wake up the next day and you just forget all like, of the rules. Sleep. I don't know. I don't sleep on that joint, bro. Like I'm standing up the whole night on two boards, dog. <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy. So I mean, he realizes that you know that the thing is, um, it's attacking her. Um, so he has a chance, and he's while it's just distracted, he swims for the shore. And this is the part that gets me because he he makes it. But this dumbass want to sit there and, and gloat. Like, I don't even know why you just stop at the edge of the water. Like, that, like, that was running to the car, car dog. <laughs> and then him peeling yeah. out, man. And then, and then he's, I think he says something. It's like, yeah, I beat you. I beat you. Yeah. And then, fucking, and then all of a sudden, the thing just jumps thing out, jumps out like a wave, and, dog. Like a blanket over him. Consumes you know? him. And that's a rap, dude. And man. that's one of those ones where it's like, you, you're not mad to see him go. Nah, I'm not mad. So, man, you know what? You deserved it too. You know yeah, and like, and, I, and like I said, man, this is the best one. I think that's in the best spirit of what we got before. There, there. Even though this messed up, these people died. But even how he gets it at the end, that's funny. It's yeah. like even him gloating at the monster after he seemingly beats it, and then it's, yo, that's pretty. That's just seeing the body parts of one of the other people in the block. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the skeleton, and it's just so funny. It's like, yeah, I beat you, and then the joint was like, oh, you did? Where you go right to the shore? I mean, dude, yeah, why like, like the waves could still almost touch your toes, mm -hmm. but like you said, yeah. with with the banter, and then the way that this one ends, it kind of shows that lightheartedness that mm -hmm. yeah. the first creep show gave us throughout. Even though it was a horror film, it gives us a lot of laughable moments. Yeah, it's fun, dark, comedic uh, thrills, man. Like it'd be crazy if they showed the blob in the car, like rolling up the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, not for nothing. If this was out of if this wasn't a creep show segment, like this one story, they could have found a way to make this the feature length film if they really wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. There was just there were so many elements and aspects that were involved that they could have stretched this one out for an hour and yeah. twenty minutes. You yeah, know what definitely, I mean? Definitely. And um, what is that? A Trans Am? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So I mean, if you would got to it, it, it could have peeled out pretty fast. And then we see the no swimming sign at the very end as, as it goes out. So zing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get a little bit more animated. Um, like I said, man, I love the style of that. This animated parts. It's something about this animation is so creepy. Of course, yo, it, these bullies look. Crazy. I love the I love the look of the main bully. Yeah. I mean, he looks like so husky, so overweight, but he's so swole in the arms. It's like, dude, what do you do? Just drink beers and lift yeah. weights yeah. <laughs> and ride ride BMXs and and, and pick on little ones. Look how they him off at the curve, yo. Why my man rocking spurs? He got spurs too, yeah. 
Man, I've never tried to ride a BMX with boots and spurs wow, on. Like, he's like, definitely just. He's, over the he's just built, he looks like a dude that just built the persona off trying to be tough. But you, in a way, he kind of reminds me of of the of the brother um, from from Goonies. Man, remember how he was walking around with with sleeves off his shirt? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know, not for nothing, like his look, he looks like the dude version of uh, Ursula from mm-hmm. Disney's Little Mermaid. Like in the face, like he. He really, I was like, man, if yeah. he was purple, that's Ursula's brother, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's crazy, dude. I wonder what else these animators have worked on. But, um, so our next story involves this woman on a dark night uh, rolling down the highway. And this one has an interesting premise. I think I'm not as bothered by this one, too, just because it's, it's kind of just short and to the point of straightforward, um, by then, I guess we're, that's the last, uh, pretty much yeah. 20 minutes of this movie, you know, um, but she seems to be driving. I don't know where she's going. It looks like upstate New York or whatever. She was creeping on her husband. Uh, it shows at the beginning, like she's, she's pretty much paying this dude to, to give her, you know, sexual favors. And then she has to get home by a certain time mm-hmm. before her husband gets home. And so that's why she's speeding through, you know. So she's going to see like a gigolo. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, she's jigga jamming. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she got to get home before she gets caught up. So, uh, and apparently she, she took a little bit too much time. So she's speeding through. And then, you know, she hits, you know, a bystander in the street. He's just, yeah. He's just out there. While she's speeding. And, and, and it's crazy, too, because not only she's speeding, but it's late. And she's falling asleep. Like, she's yeah. way behind schedule. And, um, and I guess from her disorientation being sleepy she um runs off the road a little bit which causes her to lose control and then she runs into some dude that's just out there um innocent bystander and um then things get interested man because um she's there she waits she, she's wide awake now mm-hmm. that's when the morality comes in because um she sees another car coming and panics and was like damn i'm getting the fuck out of here because i yeah. obviously hit this dude didn't even check to see if he was alive no. she was more concerned with her time and how she dented up her bend yeah and, and it was crazy um um part to me was because um the um uh was it the, the, there's like debris and stuff flying around the, the dead by the sign starts floating doing crazy shit yeah. like i'm like dude, and then, and then like, we get a car that drives by <laughs> her so she clicks her lights out it's like damn you, you just got in the accident yeah. now you're on, on this windy road you're gonna click your lights out and then we get the the truck that pulls up which this is also you know a testament to the first one because that's where we get our stephen king camp yeah, yeah. He, is, <laughs> he is the truck driver <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So that was cool that he, you know, he, he you know, he showed face in this one yeah. as well. But um, but yeah, because and it, it's weird because um, isn't the other car was is that her man? Mm-mm. I'm trying to think. All right, I don't think so, it ever. I don't even really think it ever says if it's her man or not. I think it was just somebody else driving. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. But, but anyway, um, she goes on her way. But but what's interesting, man, is um, um. I forgot. I feel like uh, the, the, the 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 this figure man suddenly just attaches to her vehicle, like he, like it's there. The, yeah, the, it's like he 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 he's dead, but he like she's now being you know haunted by his ghost. Like, yeah. It's like he, he just keeps showing up in the car. Thanks for the ride. Thanks. I think for that's the really ride. him though. Like some kind of way, he's he's on top of the car. He's around the car. He's um he's it, like it gets to a crazy point. She's trying to shake him. You know, he, he, first he's he's like on the hood. He's hood and then he's on the top. top. He he falls into the road. She backs over him again. Like she, like she in, she drives him into a tree. Yeah. I mean, talk about like if if your car is your most important thing because she 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 yeah, makes she that very that clear mm-hmm. at the very beginning that she loves this car and she I mean completely obliterates this Benz. Um, but yeah, this dude, she can't shake him. And mm-hmm. that's the one thing that I did appreciate about yeah, I like this that. story I like is, you know, and, and as every time we see the, the hitchhiker, like he's more messed up and mm-hmm. like this body horror that they give us, you know what I'm saying? He, yeah. he looks, he starts to look really creepy. She keeps like doing, having to do more to, to him. hurt him more. But I swear that's the same car that pulls up at the end, dude. I, it might be, it might be, you know, like, like they just miss each other. Like she's trying to beat him to the house, but and then he, yeah, because when she does pull up to the house, she's like, oh my gosh, she's not home. So it's like the where for all of like, oh, I didn't even have to rush. I could have just took my time, you know, what I'm saying to get yeah. home. Yeah, but 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 now that you say it, uh, it, it has to be his ghost because his body's clearly there. They stopped the call yeah. authorities, 
And but 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 it, it's an interesting thing because one of the other things that's interesting to me is that her running dialogue because like um even before we, she gets into the accident she's talking to herself basically playing it out in her head what she's mm -hmm. going to tell her husband to explain why she's late and and this and that and, and it continues even through the parts with this dude as the car gets more dang banged up and she's trying to evade him she's talking well it's nothing honey you know you know three four thousand yeah. fix that easily like like it, it, you know things like that but 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 it's crazy to me how the like I said the the, the guy just keeps showing up man he doesn't go away can, look the ambulance is passing her or no that's a U-Haul all right all right but but yeah, she, yeah. She, she's driving paranoid scared that someone's gonna know that she hit this man and left him laying there and she's just trying to get back to the crib man but then all these things like I said the the, the dude she hit is, is there he starts yeah. popping up in the road again he's he's on the car he's under the car he's even when she pulls him then he's in the car yeah you know what I'm saying yeah, like she's crazy. she's not gonna shake this ghost like mm -hmm. you know you you will pay for the wrong that you did and what the one thing that I do like about this story is that even though this one might not be the best in this film but it did open up doors for other films that follow this story genetic makeup. Like, you know, uh -huh. I know what you did last summer mm. or, you know, th things like that, where, you know, we, we, we get somebody who does wrong and then tries to get away from it. And then they are stalked and, you know, they have to pay their dues for the wrong that they did. You know mm. what I mean? That's that, when I watch this one, that's why I appreciate it. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Cause like, even though no, no, no one else did it, you and that person you did it to, they're aware and, and i guess it's just you know basically it's she's just not a good person man you yeah. know most people would have i would hope most people would have stopped even though I've, I've known some stories man i know someone that, that i know personally that was in a hit and run and, and died and i don't think they've ever found the people that hit her car and just left her laying you know mm -hmm. when all they could have done was you know call 911 but but it does it's interesting man like i said man like that's where the fun of this one i think is is hers we know she's rotten so in a way we're rooting against her yeah in this situation because yeah, it's like nah yo, you gotta be stopped and it's funny she's so determined to not accept and, and stop and and confront what she's done right and, and everywhere she goes it's a point where she's driving in the woods bro <laughs> like it's crazy as shit to me yeah but, but also like the fact that this car is totally indestructible through this whole process know, and it right? keeps going like most cars would have quit by now i didn't Axel know so off or... tanks dog yeah, that, <laughs> thing is, that thing is moving man <laughs> it's a tank. the headlights the headlights don't get taken out no matter what? all this stuff she's hitting man it's crazy but yeah and to your point i mean it's just it's this this one is just a a, a testament to like human selfishness you know mm -hmm. like she i mean she makes comments throughout this whole segment where i mean even at the beginning when the gigolo is like yeah i'm gonna need you to start paying me more since i'm doing all this stuff she was like well i gotta get home by this time because my husband's the one that's paying you mm -hmm. and it seems like that's the thing that's motivating her like nothing's gonna stop her from getting home before he does just to not have to answer for the initial wrong that she was doing mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah 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 it's crazy man it's a wild uh, situation and it does have like i said a, a pretty cool ending man it, but this one feels more in line with what we were getting in the uh, first film as well. You yeah. Know? I just think, ultimately, I just think this one missteps just from that initial premise. And, and yeah, there are budget limitations, but um, I, I feel like as far as the writing, though, like this one definitely has the most involved, you know, character yes. like wise and all that. Even how the dialogue is, is written out for her. I think it's pretty good and i think she does a really good uh performance uh who's the actor in this that, the one that's doing this um was that annie lansing yeah yeah she plays annie lansing so that's going to be lois childs the um the, the woman that's uh driving this car man yeah i mean it, it's just it's a strong you know solo performance like you said she does pretty much carry this this segment all the way through mm -hmm. but like you said, I mean, all in all, you can tell from beginning to end the, the the budget restraints and whatever restrictions were being imposed on them during filming. And then I think how because this is an anthology, how they distributed funding also. Like, I yeah. mean, you can tell that they spent more on certain segments versus the others. And you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, I think you could have squeezed out another premise into this film if you shortened that first one and then made another one that was more wasn't so reliant on special effects but also was still kooky and a little bit like deranged and you know 
I mean, not for nothing. I'm glad that they didn't throw the the Hellcat story in this because I feel like that with just the way that this this movie went, the dynamics and everything, it, I feel like they just might would have missed the mark. Whereas mm -hmm. what we got from the story and the tales from the uh, the tales from the Dark Side movie, they, they you know they did justice by that story. So I'm glad that they took that one out. Mm -hmm. And then apparently the other one was supposed to be some kind of a what did, what did they say it was. Uh, the story was called Pitfall. It's about like a ghostly rival bowling team. So, I mean, yeah, they geez, probably would have cost that. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> like another ten mil. <laughs> <laughs> Zombies yeah. bowling. I don't know how yeah. that's gonna work. I mean, I guess ultimately, man, I'm gonna talk this one up as a sequel that kind of misses the mark. You know, I, I don't think it's as bad as the reputation. You know, is for you know having seen it. You know, just recently, but. When compared to the other one, it it definitely is just just way inferior. You know what I'm saying? It's an orange. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I mean, yeah. the the first initial creep show is just so good. You could tell like the amount of energy and effort that was put behind it. You know, to make it a successful film, where this one is just not to say the the effort wasn't there, but mm -hmm. there just must have been a lot of other things going on behind the scenes that just really ultimately made this one kind of mm -hmm. fall a little flat. Yeah, definitely. And then there is a third creep show, but that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, y'all yeah, gonna have to probably check uh, that one out on your own. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that one, that, that one don't even hold a candle to this one. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, but I think we're gonna wrap this one up, folks, man. We're probably gonna catch y'all next time on the next Classes of Cinematics, man. You can follow us at Classes of Cinematics on Instagram. And it's been Monk, and you catch me on at uh, monkey blood on twitter and, and instagram and it's bobby blockbuster you can catch me on instagram at bobby blockbuster 118 all right folks peace